All right. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Avi Tellyas. I'm the founder of Makerhoods. And um, I think you all heard that uh, last week we finally um, uh, closed the transaction to begin this project and uh, wanted to uh, give you a little bit of background about the project, uh, specifically on its um, uh, phased construction and uh, uh, discuss some opportunities uh, for anybody that's interested and has the ability to, uh, um, to perform some work on the project. So um, if you have, uh, Kristen, maybe you can, you can speak about how if they have a question or, or they want to uh, raise their hand as it were in, in the webinar, how they can do that. Yeah, sure thing. So if you have a question, you can put it in the um, chat here. Um, you'll see a notification or in the Q&A section. Um, and, and we'll be able to see that. And toward, at the end of the presentation, I will make sure to, uh, to make sure that Avi gets all the questions uh, in, in advance uh, or as, as we get to that part, portion. Of the presentation. Uh, so with that, Avi, I will uh, just tell me when to forward the slides. Good. So we also have uh, on the line um, uh, George Georgiatis from uh, Rig Construction and uh, Joe uh, Marino from uh, Seaview Development, and, and I'll explain to you their role in, in, the, in the project. So uh, go ahead and, and advance the slide, Kristen. Um, why don't you go ahead, Kristen, and talk a little bit about Makerhoods and, and what we're about and what we're trying to accomplish here. Sure. So Makerhoods, um, we uh, are a community development uh, that is centered around empowering and elevating and investing in overlooked makers. Um, we are a social enterprise that is dedicated to eliminating the barriers to entrepreneurship through affordable work-lived developments and innovative business support programs. And essentially, at the end of the day, we are here to help underrepresented, under-resourced under makers increase their take-home in income and generate wealth for themselves and their families. And the large kind of impetus of our uh, New Work Makerhoods project is that we will be recruiting 16 makers and providing them an apartment a separate shop space, business support, and access to markets all at one monthly low cost, starting at $1,800 a month. And um, this is one component of, of the Makerhoods program, but Newark Makerhoods uh, also has the Kruger Scott Mansion that, that Avi will talk about. But essentially, the whole campus, if you will, is to support entrepreneurship, creativity, artisans, uh, into a uh, and develop a community of like-minded, uh, driven entrepreneurs who want to grow their business. Great. I'll go to the next slide. So the project, uh, as you know, of course, is at the Kruger Scott Mansion, um, and it's. Um, um, Two, two uh, distinct phases. One is the renovation of the mansion, um, and one is a uh, new construction of 66 apartments and a greenhouse structure uh, on the site. Um, and the reason I say it's phase one and phase two, uh, and it, this is the map of the, the um, layout. Number one is the mansion. That's a renovation project. As you know, that mansion has been uh, vacant for uh, probably 25 or 30 years, and it does require quite extensive renovation uh, that's true to the, its historic nature. Uh, number two is the apartment building. That's 66 apartments, and there are 10 shops uh, below. And number three is the greenhouse. And uh, they, the reason we, we, we discuss them as two separate phases, the greenhouse and the residential in one, and and the mansion in another is because they require two distinct sets of, of skills. One is a renovation that has to be true to the historic nature of the mansion that requires knowledge and expertise in restoration, uh, historic restoration work. And the other is the apartment building, which is a more 
uh, general purpose construction of an apartment building, a wood structure, and a greenhouse, which is a steel and glass structure. So go to the next one, uh, Kristen. The uh, mansion will have office space. It'll have co-working space that somebody for uh, under a couple hundred dollars a, a month uh, can uh, rent some working space. Um, and it has also performance space and an event space. Next one, please. The courtyard uh, is um, <clears throat> going to be uh, an event space as well. You can see the greenhouse to the left. That's a, a glass and steel structure. Uh, the, the third level uh, is uh, from the top of that is, the third level is a greenhouse. And you can see the glass there for the greenhouse. The middle layer is a commercial kitchen and demonstration kitchen and event space. Uh, and the lowest level is the parking. That's the ground level. And of course we have the courtyard um, and you can see the, the surrounding the courtyard are the 10 commercial spaces. And up above that are 66 apartments. Uh, go ahead, Kristen. So the new construction is, the general contractor on that project is Rig Construction Group. Um, and I give you there uh, the, the, the um, manager of that company, George Georgiadis. Uh, his uh, email is available to you. So feel free to reach out to him directly uh, if uh, you're interested in, in uh, either contracting or employment opportunities for, for the project. Uh, and the mansion <clears throat> uh, is a Seaview development. Uh, and Joe Marino, you can reach him at seaviewdevelopment at gmail.com. Uh, and again, as we said before, that's more of a historical preservation experience is a plus for that. Uh, go to the next one, uh, Kristen. Uh, but we also have, aside from strictly just uh, a labor requirement, we have some other requirements as well. Um, we are interested in some interior designers, especially for some of the demonstration apartments, uh, demo apartments, um, also for that demonstration kitchen. Uh, we're interested in uh, furniture and cabinet makers, uh, both for the furniture uh, in the mansion, as well as some of the cabinets in and around some of the maker spaces and some of the store fixtures. Um, for sure, some artists and sculptors for some site art, uh, we're interested in that. We have room uh, on the side of the building for a very large mural, and we have an idea of what we want to do there. And of course, uh, lighting fixtures. If somebody's in that business, uh, uh, we very much would welcome some custom lighting, particularly if they're sort of locally made. So those are the other areas of, of interest uh, that we have right now. Uh, go to the next one, Kristen. <coughs> So if you're interested, you can go and uh, fill out an application on makerhoods.com Newark uh, Makerhoods slash Newark Makerhoods uh, or uh, send information to um, um, one of the two emails that we had given uh, previously. And if anybody's interested, we can go back to those slides. So with that uh, said, I will open it up to questions. I see there's a um, there's a Q&A that came up. Um, let me see in the chat box there. Okay, uh, one from uh, uh, Jose. Uh, given the COVID-19 situation, will you be building these office spaces, event working spaces with that in mind? <clears throat> That's a great question, Jose. So um, uh, in the construction phase, we have a complete uh, COVID-19 protocol that, uh, that you would have to go through. Um, luckily in the initial phases, most of the work is an outdoor work, so it's a little bit less strenuous. Uh, than the interior work. Uh, once we get into the interior work, of course, there'll be the prerequisite social distancing um, and uh, sanitization that's required. But you're talking about, I think, the occupancy once it's built. Uh, that's in a year and a half. It's going to take us 18 months to complete the construction of this, uh, Jose. So uh, we're hoping that at that time, or well, by that time, a year and a half from now, that um, <clears throat> the uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, is uh, handled and, and, and maybe there are some treatments and vaccines available. If not, uh, we will employ the same COVID-19 protocols that there are today for offices, which is social distancing, 
as well as uh, mandatory uh, wearing of masks uh, in, inside. I hope, I hope that helps. Anybody else have a question or uh, interested in uh, uh, knowing a little bit more? Uh, uh, Avi, here we had one question that came through around the emails for the construction site. So let me go back um, to those slides real quick. Um, so this is rig construction for the new construction. I'll give you guys another minute to write that down. Okay, and then here is the um, other email address. Great, and um, Joseph had a comment here, a copy of the slides. Um, yes, so uh, I will be sending out the recording of this video um, and, and follow-up information with the links and whatnot um, to everyone who, who signed up for this webinar. Any other questions? Avi, maybe you can just, um, yes, yeah, so another question we have is when will the construction begin, Avi? Oh, okay. So uh, we haven't formally started construction just yet. Uh, what we've done is uh, clear the site so we can bring in a construction trailer and, of course, uh, clean up the um, walk-off pad that's there for the trucks. Um, as you know, there was a farm there before, so there was about three feet of topsoil, which we removed. Uh, uh, and so we're hoping that uh, sometime in the next uh, week to 10 days, obviously we're going into the July 4th weekend, but uh, sometimes when the, within the next uh, week to 10 days, uh, construction will start in earnest. It'll take about 18 months to complete. I see there's more questions there, uh, Kristen. Yes, um, yes, uh, we had a question in the chat. What were some of the challenges you faced in preparation to get this project? Oh, uh, Jose's got a couple of really good questions. Um, uh, you know, it, it was a, a very difficult project, honestly, to put together because the concept of um, uh, essentially light industrial zoning in a residential building uh, was is new and so it took us a while to first get folks to understand the kind of zoning that we wanted so we had to change the zoning and then of course it took us quite a bit of time to raise the funds for it because uh, so many of our of our apartments 35% uh, are affordable um, and so that took a long time because it's much obviously much more difficult to finance those those kind of projects. So that took a little while. Uh, getting through uh, the normal bureaucracy of City Hall took a long time. Uh, so we've been at this uh, for five years uh, from the first contact we made from the city with the city till we got the final go ahead. So, um, you know, the normal trials and tribulations of development take quite some time. And especially if you're trying to do something that's uh, unique and different, that took a little bit longer as well. Avi, there's a question around the garden here. Um, will the garden be a community garden and will the makers have the opportunity to adopt plots from it? So maybe you can give a little bit more clarity as to what's happening there. Right. Uh, no, the, 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 the garden or the greenhouse is a, another uh, maker business. So it's not a community garden. It's a, it's a maker business. Somebody will run that and um, grow whatever it is that they think they would like to grow. We've had people who wanted to run it and also uh, create a, a juice bar from it. So you get a direct from farm to juice bar kind of thing. So, um, and, and whoever does run it eventually might want to include a community element to it. We'd encourage them to do that, but uh, it's not uh, currently planned to be a community garden.
Any other questions? Like I said, I will be sending out this information um, uh, later today. Uh, and you feel, feel free to, to reach out with any additional questions or anything like that. Kristen, give them those emails again. So if anybody missed it, they can have it and they can um, sure thing. reach out. This is for the new construction. And this is for the mansion. In particular for the mansion, I'd like to say, uh, we definitely are looking out. Uh, I did searches, I couldn't find anybody. Maybe somebody can reach out to me. People that, I can, that can make some uh, furnishings, some desks for the co-working space, some cabinets, uh, some sofas. So we have some uh, custom made items that we'd love to have somebody locally make make for us. Um, we have another question here. Is this job open to bringing on new construction firms who look, work alongside Rig to gain some experience and once the project is complete, how can makers assist this firm beyond this project? So um, I think, so you're saying a, a small uh, firm is interested in, in bidding on parts of the project? Is that what the question is? Uh, I think so. Um, is, uh, is this job open to bringing on new construction firms to work alongside RIG to gain some experience? That's so, so, okay, I understand. So we, we um, Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. So the contracts for the residential and the contract for the mansion have been given. So those contracts have been given. But, you know, if you have a, a small company that wants to gain some experience um, and, uh, you know, reach out to this number here as well as rig construction and see view and, and let's see if there's a way that we can um, uh, incorporate some of uh, some of your folks in, in, a, in a kind of a of a, of a learning mode and working mode, sure. I think that's something that we should we should take a look at. Uh, one of the ideas that we have, for example, is um, <clears throat> we want to be able to finish each apartment uh, in total before we go to the next apartment. So if you have a crew that includes some carpenters, electricians, and a plumber that may be able to do some of that work, <clears throat> that might be an opportunity to take one apartment at a time, <clears throat> pardon me, and complete it. So by all means, reach out to the folks we mentioned, and, and it's worth a conversation. <clears throat> or maybe even doing some of the interior work, um, you know, maybe in the demonstration kitchen, maybe in the mansion itself. So yeah, of course, reach out and, and we should discuss what your abilities are and where, where it might fit. <clears throat> Um, and then the second part of that question is, once the project is complete, how can makers assist this firm beyond this project? Um, do you mean this firm as in Makerhoods? Yeah, I, I assume it's how can Makerhoods help the firm that he's mentioning uh, in the future? I, I think that's what he's mentioning, <clears throat> but maybe we can just confirm. <clears throat> ah, okay, that's exactly right. Uh, yes, in fact, we have a project that is uh, on the drawing boards in Patterson, New Jersey. That's about three times larger than this one, and it's got a lot more phases. So uh, I encourage you to at least uh, introduce yourself um, uh, for that project. <clears throat> I see a question from BB about a maintenance crew. Uh, BB, we hired um, the Michaels organization to be our project uh, management company. Uh, they also manage a building just uh, down the block from us. They will be hiring a maintenance crew. So please send us your information. We'll give, you, we'll give that to the Michaels organization. When they, in about 18 months, come on board, they should definitely reach out to you and have you bid for the maintenance. And Avi, there was a um, 
two, two questions regarding Patterson. One is reconstruction doing the Patterson project as well, and when will bids go out for that Patterson project? Good question. Uh, you know, I, I have a very high regard for George and Rig. Uh, they've done masterful work for us so far in putting together the right uh, bid and the right uh, logistical plan, the right construction plan. So we, we will begin our work with Rig. Uh, and if they're competitive, which I expect them to be, then uh, I think they will be the general contractor as well. What's the second part of that question? Uh, when will the bids go out for the Patterson project? So, as I told you earlier, we it took us five years to get the Newark project off the ground. Uh, I don't expect Patterson to take that long, but you're looking at least another 24 months. Kristen, make sure you send BB the... Um, contact information for um, uh, the Michaels organization folks on the management team. I think Mar it was Mario. I'll do. Any other questions? Thank you, Jose. Thank you. We'll just stay on for, for another minute here. And by the way, if you also, uh, anybody in the audience is a maker, um, please reach out for uh, potentially being, a, being one of the tenants in, uh, in the project. We definitely would love to uh, discuss it with you. Currently, we're focusing on two specific uh, segments. One is fashion-oriented businesses, and, and Housewares, I think, would go into that, into that mode and food related businesses. So if you're anywhere near those two industries and you want to start your business, you want to have your own little shop and live above it, um, please reach out to us as well. Um, there was a question on sharing the contact information for the Michael organization. And yeah, my follow-up email, I can, I can put that in there. Um, just, just for clarity, the Michael organization is property management. So that will be after construction uh, is, is complete, that, that, that would be their role. Um, also, uh, or Avi, do you have anything else to add to that? No, and they will give out a, a, a contract for, you know, maintenance and, 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 you know, landscape keeping and all those other, other pieces. Um, great, and then, also, and also to a note on, um, uh, uh, becoming a maker uh, with have the apartment and the separate uh, commercial space. Um, there will be an application uh, process for that and we expect to release the preliminary criteria um, to, to uh, be prepared for when the application goes live. But in the meantime, um, you can definitely reach out to me as we are very active working with makers now, especially on our Makerhoods Market. Um, and you will have my contact information when I send the follow-up uh, uh, email. And yeah, I see a couple of comments here, which I like. Uh, uh, Joseph Dunphy talked a little bit about his uh, skills in audio and acoustical treatments um, and working on projects for veterans. Um, Joseph, in the mansion, uh, we're planning in the basement to do something along the lines of, of um, a micro theater and also a um, uh, maybe some 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 small uh, recording uh, capability. So certainly uh, reach out to Kristen and talk about that because I think that would be a good um, that would actually be excellent if we can involve some veterans in that. Uh, then a question from BB: uh, an idea of how many bedrooms uh, the apartments. So uh, BB, the apartments are a one bedroom, a two bedroom. And something that's a little unique, also three bedrooms. Very few of the new developments have three bedrooms. We very much would like to invite families to our community. So we've made four of the, of the 66 apartments. I think it's four, I, I don't remember, it might be a little bit more, uh, are three bedrooms as well. So you have a choice of any one of those.
All right. I think I think that takes care of most of the questions, Kristen. Yep, I think so. Um, and again, if anything pops up, uh, you'll have all of our contact information. And thank you so much for attending today. And hope you all stay safe out there so we can see each other in person soon. Thank you all. Thank you for, for continuing support. And I hope to uh, meet you all in person once the pandemic uh, subsides a little bit. Have a, have a great July 4th weekend.